Turn with us this morning to the book of uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter is where we'll uh, be today. 1 Peter chapter number 5. First Peter chapter number five. I desire your prayers this morning. Appreciate the opportunity just to be in the Lord's house, but um, feel frail in mind at best. But what a God we serve. Appreciate the spirit that he shared with us all morning. And uh, we certainly want to be obedient now. There's a point in your life that truth will, will be the voice that speaks. And, and it's God's word. It's God's truth. And when that does speak, there's a response that's required. Uh, it's just like anything else. I mean, if I tried to hand you a pen, you, you've got to take it uh, or, or you'll miss it. You just won't receive it. And uh, today's salvation uh, that involves the drawing power of God as he bids you come and be saved, that's something you have to receive. So I'll trust today that you'll obey God and minding. First Peter chapter number five. I'm going to begin at verse number six. Just going to read two verses this morning, and we desire your prayers. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you'd open our heart to it. That you would help us, Father, to see this truth, recognizing that in the day we live, we need someone that cares, someone that knows our heart, and someone we can trust to cast our care upon. Forgive us where we failed you, for we know we have. Help us, we humbly pray. As we ask now, we pray for that soul among us that needs you. May their heart be moved by your presence in your word. We trust it be clear. In all of this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. It's not necessarily the exalting that we're interested in, but I want you to think about the one in whom has been exalted. Now, God knows your needs, and there's, there are those days when only God knows what's going on in your life. He doesn't know what you're going, or he doesn't know what... Uh, or you don't know what I'm going through, and I don't know what you're going through, but God does. He understands and he knows. There, there are times when uh, even some among us this morning grieve. There are times when there is pain that is so great and so hard to bear that uh, it seems you can't go on. There are things that uh, you go through in life that we don't understand, that we want answers to, and it seems there aren't any. And yet what we find is that there's still a God, and he still cares for you. And I want this morning, as best I can, to try and to share how much he cares for you. Now, that means something to me, and I certainly treasure every friendship, every relationship that is here this morning. This is my family. It's my church family, but more than that, it's, it's family. These are my brothers and my sisters in Christ. There's nobody else on the earth that I have any more confidence in than those people that are sitting among us this morning. And I, I love you and I appreciate your love for me and your prayers for me. But I want to say today, there's nobody knows me like Jesus. There's nobody that understands uh, my suffering. There's nobody that understands the good days, the bad. No, nobody understands the trouble that I bring upon myself and my own mind and the struggles of life. And I want to say today how glad that I am that he cares for my soul. And I, there's times that I need to be reminded of that. We have uh, the word of God and certainly the knowledge of God that just girds up under us sometimes. Sister Bernice, there's times that I just have to trust his word. I can't feel him. I don't know where he's at. And yet all the while his word is girding me. His oath and his covenant, friend, are sure. They've never failed. They've, they, not one time has that good rock ever fell out from under me. I've forever been preserved the day that I got born again. But uh, friend, I want you to know this morning that there's somebody that cares for you. There's one that loves you. Amen. 
amen, more than life itself. There's one, friend, that has proven his love for you and will do anything, uh, friend, and has done everything to prove that to you. And I, I want to uh, say today that I realize that hardships are real. And uh, there is something that's, uh, a friend, that's a depression of this world. And I believe there's also an oppression. I believe we have an enemy today that would have us to dwell in those areas of life. He would have, he would have us drawn into those places where we feel so pitiful and unloved or alone. We feel like that nobody cares for our soul. But how, uh, uh, how wrong that truly is when we recognize that there is one that sticketh closer to us than a brother. He's right there. He knows our needs. He knows, friend, when you're doing well and when you ain't. He knows when the enemy has come and sown those seeds of discord in your heart. He knows when the grief has struck you. He knows when you don't want to get up and go. He knows when you want to just stay secluded and undone with the world. But may I say to you today, there's hope in Jesus this morning. There is one that cares for you. Oh, we live in a time where the enemy would have you believe that there's nobody that cares. He take all the hope away from some today. That very thing is going on and, and rampant, it seems, as we recognize, friend, how awful and how wicked that our enemy is. And so many times you get bound down in the things of this world tonight. Don't know exactly who the message is for this morning, but let me be clear. There ain't one of us exempt from depression. There ain't one of us exempt from an oppression. There's not one of us exempt from hard things and struggles of life and those, t- those things that seem to tax our very minds and our spirit. But may I say to you today, the word of God has never failed. And if we'll lean to God, you'll find the answer that you need is right there. You have one friend that is always there, even when you're looking for him. Even when you can't seem to find him, he's but a whisper away. He ain't gone anywhere. He's the same place. I'm glad that he knows what I need. I remember just this week, I'd gone to my knees. I was praying on Monday morning and the Lord was, and I was trying to find him. I couldn't seem to I'd kick where I needed to be. And I was praying, Greg, and I was seeking God. And you know what? He just stopped me for a minute. And it's just like the Holy Spirit said, you're going about this all wrong. And he began to show me that old cross. I was sitting right here and as I seen that cross it began uh, to get clear to my mind what the word of God says about he that was afflicted for my soul and friend just the very minute that I began to see that cross and a savior hanging on it and the suffering that he endured for me I was able to whisper his name and the Holy Ghost blew through this place amen with a refining fire and it helped my soul that day. I'm telling you right now there is somebody that cares for you today. Yeah, the world don't want you to believe that. What the world wants you to believe is all the hope there is is in your friends, in the things of this world, in the things of this life that seemingly bring pleasure for a season. But may I say to you today, there ain't a lasting peace in this world. There never has been. There never will be. The only real peace comes from Christ. And if you don't know him this morning, friend, you're missing out. You say, preacher, I believe I'll just stick where I'm at. Listen, you can choose those things. And I'm sorry to say that there's a lot of people that live that way. But I want you to know that you need to come out from among that stuff. You need to let that go and you need to let God work in your life and to bring you out of those things that you need are delivered from today. There's an evil in this world and it would have you down. It would have you give up. And you know what? There are stresses of life and there are pain and struggles and I realize that you can't smile through everything but I want you to know there is a God and he has never failed and he loves you today more than anything else. What a God that we serve. Amen. We've got one that cares for us. You say, preacher, he don't care for me. Look at my life. It's upside down. Everything is wrong. Look at my life. Look at the struggles and the, and the problems that I've got. Look at my home. Look at my marriage. Look at my children. Look at my finances. Look at, amen, you can make a thousand excuses, but I want you to know that God, God ain't never changed today. And I believe just like the psalmist did, I was once young, but now I'm old. I, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Hey, let me stop right there right one minute. I'm glad, over. I don't call myself righteous that the imputed righteousness of Christ was given me one day and brother that 
that's what makes me righteous. And I want you to know I've never seen how the righteous forsaken. I've never seen a day, my friend, when the people of God were absent of the one that redeemed them. There's never been a moment in your life, my friend, that you can claim, my friend, that God wasn't there or that God didn't see or that God didn't care. You need to get the enemy out of your life today and start believing the word of God and it'll rescue you. We need the word of God today. You say, preacher, it seems that in the day that we live in, there ought to be more weeping than there is laughter. Certainly, if we keep our eyes upon this world, amen, that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do, is to dwell on the things of this world. He'd like for you to keep CNN off, on. He'd like you to keep all those other media outlets on that don't do anything but whisper discord and, 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 and injustice and wickedness into the minds of people everywhere. They're trying to control you and I today I'm through all of the uh, things over the airwaves. But let me say something to you today. I believe we ought to just get our face back in this book. And I believe that there's some words that'll come across your airwaves. There's a word that'll come across the spirit of your heart that'll set you apart from this world. And it'll show you that there's something to live for. There's there's something to stand for. Uh, there's something to die for. Hey Amen. God ain't any different than he has been. He's still on the throne. He's still sovereign and ruling over everything. And brother, that includes your life. God ain't made a mistake and he won't. He's not made a mistake. He hadn't lost you. You hadn't somehow wandered out of his hand. Listen, I got to get started here. But I want you to know that there's one that loves you. There's one that cares for your soul. What the Bible said, what Peter was, I love this, don't you? The Bible said that Peter, as he was finishing that particular letter, and he was writing it to all the churches, in the fifth chapter, you'll find that as he began to close that, he said to them something I believe that's paramount, Brother Greg, we've got to recognize the importance of humility. Amen. Remember who's God, brother. It ain't you, and it ain't me. I don't have the answers, but I know the one that does. He said to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God, I'll tell you right now, the best place you can get to, friend, is just get absent of your pride for a minute. Just recognize that you ain't anything without God. You ain't ever done anything without God. Bless his holy name. You need him, friend, in every breath he provides. He's a God today that can help you. He'll rescue you from the problems that I plague your soul. He'll lift you up out of that miry clay and set your feet on a solid rock. He'll establish your going today if you just let him friend he cares for you Amen. oh that we could see that he cares for us turn with us this morning I want you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter number 53 chapter number 53 does he care for you does he care for you this morning I want you to see what the, the Bible through the prophet Isaiah wrote to us Isaiah chapter number 3 I mean 53 I'm just going to start at verse number 3 but I Listen, what, what, what Peter wrote to them was, he said, listen, if you'll humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he said, he'll take care of your problems. He's going to lift you up. He'll exalt you in due time. You just hang on. He said, but this, listen to me this morning. Here's the message, casting all your care upon him. I'll tell you the hardest thing we can do sometimes, let go of our problems. Amen. We're a little nervous when we turn loose of stuff as if God can't handle it. <laughs> Amen. How foolish a thought, Chris, when we get into the throne room of God and the sovereign of the, <laughs> the almighty. When we get in his presence, how foolish a thought, amen, to say, I don't know if I can trust him with that. Or you know what we'll do? We'll convince ourselves, well, I ain't sure I want him to work this out because he may have a different path than mine does. He may want me to go a different way. <laughs> amen. I'm glad, brother, he knows when I don't know. He knows what to do, friend, when an answer ain't ever occurred to me. I want you to know that we've got a God today and you can cast your care on him. Why? Because he cares for you because he cares for you say preacher I've heard this too <laughs> say preacher God don't love me God don't care for me I want to read to you some scripture now here's the Lord here's Isaiah sharing something that before it would ever happen here's what he said would happen verse number three he said he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised 
and we esteemed him not. Verse number four, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let me stop right there. Does he care for you? I'm telling you right now, if this man didn't care for you, he wouldn't have went through what he went through. Now, Isaiah was recording this before it would ever happen. The people of God, the Jews, you see, when they read Isaiah 53, they read about a Messiah that was coming. And what they learned about that Messiah was that he was going to carry their sin. He was going to bear their grief, every sorrow, and everything every hard thing he was going to take upon himself. May I say to you today, there was an advocate that stood for mankind one day on Calvary's cross. And brother, when he did so, he did that he might deliver you from your sin. You say, preacher, I ain't sure that Jesus uh, really cares for me. Uh, The Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. It was my fault that he was there. If there was anybody that shouldn't have cared for my soul, amen, he would have cast me into that pit. But he was wounded for my sake you see he proved his love for me a lot of people can say they love you a lot of people can say they care but may I say to you they ain't nobody proved it like Jesus did he cares for you he cares for you you say preacher I'm ashamed at how I live sometimes me too I'm ashamed that there are days I can't lift my head up and smile me too there are times when I don't know what to do and I don't know which way to go. And, and knowing all the while, Chris, that God ain't going nowhere. Amen. That ain't God's fault. It's mine. There are times that if I was given to myself, sister, I'd just beat myself up. Amen. Try to justify myself through some kind of a worldly action or affliction. But let me be clear about something. He was wounded for me. He was the one that took my place in that day and stood where I couldn't stand. He took the punishment I couldn't endure. He went through what I couldn't handle. The Lamb of God took on himself. Amen. What the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, the Bible said, he said, Be ye reconciled unto God, uh, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made of the righteousness of God in him. Let me tell you something. He cares for your soul. Everything that he did at Calvary, our friend, was for you. When he was on that cross, the Bible said that he saw his seed. He was looking out there in eternity future, and he saw one day a little boy that get took to a church that fall on his knees and say, I believe you, and get saved. I'm glad, for him that I know that he cares for my soul today. He cares for me. It ain't because I deserve it. No, uh, we don't even have to go down that. There ain't nobody in here. Surely you're not confused enough in our little brain to think that we deserve such, such extravagance as this. That God would love a sinner. And yet we find the Apostle Paul would put it out there as if it was an unwavering, a, a rock solid truth. And he did so. <laughs> he said that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. What he means, Doc, is that you know this and have no doubt in it that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He said, of whom I am chief. The apostle Paul knew he didn't deserve to be saved. I'll tell you right now, but he also knew that it wasn't by deserving one gets saved. It was by grace you're saved through faith. If you get born again, it'll be because you believe in God, not because you're worthy of God. Not because you're worth what he did, not because you've earned what he did. No, according to the word of God, Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. Listen to me, the Bible said he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, you see, that was due me, the chastisement that I had earned, amen. He gave himself, amen, chastened for me that I might receive the peace of God. Oh, how glad that I am that the man of God that came, by the Son of God that was born that day. He came to save the sinner today. Oh, thank God he cares for my soul. I'm not worthy of such care. All we like sheep have gone astray. Isaiah was being honest here. He said, we've turned everyone into his own way. 
Huh? Ain't that the truth? Ever, we, ain't none of us can, can say this morning we ain't ever turned to our own way. There ain't anybody in here this morning that could say, I've never turned my back on God. I've never walked away from him. I, I, I've never been not uh, disobedient unto God or been a prodigal unto God. Every one of us know what the prodigal son's all about. We've all been there. We've all squandered our goods and we've all wasted it on righteous living. There's been days for him, amen, that I thought to myself, I wondered if I was even saved. But oh, I want you to know today that there's a God that lives in me. There's a Holy Spirit, friend, that abides within my soul. And the very day I got saved, he came in and he set up a boat in me. He pushed out everything that was in there and he made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't always feel saved, but I always am because there's one that cares for me. You say, preacher, I've done too much. I've gone too far. I've been too bad. God can't love me anymore. I have, I have taken myself out of uh, the realm of God's love. May I say to you today, the very reason that he came was to die for your sins and he knows you just as you are. God cares for you. God cares for you. The most quoted, ver quoted verse and known verse to humankind, at least at this point, is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. What we see here exhibited is the love of God for mankind. And, and you know, what bothers me is so many today want to point a finger at God and say, well, if he's God, he wouldn't do this. Or if he's God, then, then this wouldn't happen. Let me tell you something. I can take you back to where sin came from, and I can tell you why there's trouble and tragedy in this world. I can take you back for the first three chapters of Genesis, and it gets real clear whose fault it is. It ain't God's. But I'll tell you right now, before there was sin, there was a Savior. <laughs> he was already there. Oh, to God. Ain't that good news? Well, even when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, there was a tree already there. There was life already there. And the Bible said that he put Adam and Eve out of the garden, put flaming cher cherubs with, with flaming swords at the entrance of it said you can't go back in there lest you take of the tree of life I want you to know that the Lamb of God has been he was he is and he is to come he's the one that was alive and dead and yet lives forevermore he's the first and the last the beginning and the end the Alpha and Omega he is the God of all creation and brother he lives inside of me you say well, does that merit anything I'll tell you what it does merit it bears the praise of God's people today because he even cares for us. He cares for you today. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The very peace that we have in Christ today was because Christ received the stripes for me. By his stripes, with his stripes we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her sears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Verse number 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, listen, he cares for you, friend. The Bible said that it pleased the Lord to bruise him. What God did to his son to make a way for all of mankind, amen, though it's foreign to our, our heart and our, our, our logic or rationale, what God did was made a way for all of mankind because he loves you, because he cares for your soul. Now, I'm trying to get back to the first part of the message where we cast our care upon him. But amen, you're not going to cast your care on something that you're not sure cares for you. So let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. He did all of these things, Greg, so that you could go free. The Lamb of God has given himself just as Isaiah said he would. He came and he gave himself a ransom for my soul, proving that he loves me. John would say it like this. He said, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon me <laughs> that we've been called the sons of God. Oh, my goodness, listen to me, friend. Because he loved me. Because he cared for my soul. Listen, one thing, you won't tell God. When you stand before God, there won't be any excuses. 
Amen. You're not going to be able to negotiate or bargain with God or say, I got a bad deal or I, I, my life it didn't turn out the way I wanted or I didn't have good parents or I didn't have good raising. I didn't have what other people had. Let me tell you something. What, what everybody has is an opportunity to know the king of glory. What everybody has, is, the Bible said <laughs> in Titus 2 and 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live righteously, sober, and godly in this present world. You say, how in the world can you be so sure that Jesus loves you? Listen, friend, number one, because he went to the cross and he bore my sin. He did all of that because he cares for your soul. Does he really care for your soul? The Bible said, Matthew said it like this. He said, while he was on the cross, he uttered some words that ought to forever astound you and, my, you and me. He said, Father, forgive them, Huh? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Oh, how he cares for you. How we live sometimes in such an oblivion. How we live in such distress. And how we live and, and allow ourselves to be pulled into those areas, those dark places where the enemy wants to steal from us the joy of our soul. I'm trying to help you understand, friend, that you have an opportunity every single day of your life, every moment of that day. You have an opportunity to bow down before the great I am. And you can cast all your care upon him. You say, preacher, that's, that, that doesn't seem to equate you can't really make that work if you're just trying to figure what I deserve and what he'll do. Listen, if it was about what you deserved, it wouldn't have been grace. But it's by grace that you're saved. And we have one today that cares for us. Oh, look at the care. Look at the care. Look at with us. The Bible said in the book of Philippians, I love this scripture, Philippians chapter number two. Paul said, who being in the form of God, right? Now he's talking about Jesus Talking about Jesus here, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Let me just be clear who Jesus Christ is. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. You can't get one without you get all three of them. And Jesus Christ thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He's, he is equal with God. They're all three one. And yet what the apostle was trying to get you and I to understand is he cares for us. He cares for us. He said, though, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself. Listen now, what the king of glory did for you. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. <laughs> and was made, <laughs> goodness precious, in the likeness of men. I touched on some of that this morning, but boy, it overwhelms me to think of what God did to bring a savior to me. <laughs> the very one that spoke this world into the existence. The, the book of Romans gives Jesus Christ the credit for creation. I'm good with that. <laughs> Amen. He spoke it all into existence. That's who I'm talking about. And yet when the search was made in heaven and the search made under the earth and the search made on the earth and there was none found worthy that could go, guess who said they would? <laughs> you say, he don't care for me. You lie. Huh? The devil just, in, he's entered your heart and your mind. He's convinced you that Jesus don't care for you. Let me tell you something right now. He cares so much for you. He bore the penalty of every man's sin so you could go free. That's how much he loves you. When you stand before God, the reason you'll not have any excuse, you won't be able to say this or that concerning your own condemnation is because Jesus Christ has done everything for you. You have nothing need but him. And friend, if you'd call on him today, he'd save you. He cares for your soul today. He cares for you. He cares. He made himself of no reputation. He became form of a servant now that's what that's what the king of glory that's who I'm talking about the Bible said in one place that God hath highly exalted him giving him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess of who him <laughs> that he is Lord of lords and he is king of kings that's who I'm talking about and yet he allowed himself he volunteered himself to be born of a virgin in a dark stable one day uh, one night he, he allowed himself to become and to take on the flesh of a man and to be a servant to a man the, the one that created you did this 
Yeah, he cares for you. You can't deny that God don't care for you. What I believe is that the enemy is at work today, and he's doing everything he can to siphon from your heart the very joy of salvation and the promises that that endure through the hope of God's holy word. He's trying to steal that from you today. He wants you to be down. He wants you to give up. He wants you to lay down that cross. But hear me today. He cares for you. You can't dispute what he did. Well, listen, if he would do that for me, he did that for you. And every one of us, can't, we can't deny that God loves us. Listen, I'll tell you right now, I'm glad. I'm glad that even though he knew himself to be equal with God, he, he he made of himself no reputation and took on the form of a servant. Listen, brother, he became what you and I couldn't be, and that was a savior to the whole world. He loves you today. He cares for your soul. I, I believe that's what's it attack, what's under attack today. He was made in the likeness of men. Listen to what he did, and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Listen, he has proved his love for you and I and all of what he did at Calvary, all of what he did to raise from the dead and to make, an oper- to make a way for you and I today. Listen, if he didn't care for you, he couldn't make such statements as whosoever will let him come. He couldn't make a statement like that that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And yet he's made a statement like that for you and for all. Listen, Jesus Christ cares for you. Now the enemy has convinced many, I believe in this world today, that there are many that are convinced and they are strapped into the, into the yoke of depression today because they have believed the lie that God don't care for them. That somehow or another, because of circumstance, is, is, is different in their life or because something is now hard that used to be easy or something different that used to be familiar. You, we, we somehow think that somehow God has absented himself from us. Listen, what the apostle Paul said was, I reckon, I reckon that the, listen, to reckon something means is you compute it. You put the formula together and you add two and two and it'll equal something at the end. Paul said, I have done this work. I've done the math. I have searched this out. I reckon to you today that the suffering of this present world ain't worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Brother, we're going to heaven one day because he cares for us. He cares for you. The lies of the enemy today. We need to dispel these lies with truth. We need to open up the word of God and let it speak in us. When the devil comes and when his lies begin to try to strip away and to tear down what God has done in you, listen, what you need to do is open up this book. One thing I know about the devil is he can't stay around the word of God. All we need to do is begin to to declare the word of God and the enemy's going to leave. The enemy's going to leave. The lies are exposed when truth is is, is set forth in our hearts and in our lives. And friend, what I want you to get today is that he cares for you. Now, there's no way to exhaust the subject, right? I'd exhaust you before I exhausted the subject. Because could, you could stand up here, Chris, preach all day long about how Jesus cares for you. Example after example. Word of God's full of it. He cares for you. Problem is you're believing a lie. You're believing the enemy's you're believing the enemy's fodder when he comes to your camp and he begins to tell you this and that and this. No, so-and-so don't like you. Or that one, I bet they said something bad about you. Or this one, they don't care for you. This one, they don't love you. They won't do this, that. That's why they don't, because they don't care for you. Listen, the devil's been doing that since the beginning of time. he had been trying to upset people and to tear them down and to make them run and to divide the church of Jesus Christ. But what we need today is to do what the Bible said to do. Galatians 6, 2. The Bible said that we ought to bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. We've got a job to do. We have got a work to do. And I'll tell you, it's worth doing because he cares for us. He cares for us. Well, let's finish with this then. What Peter said to the church was, he said, listen, you're going to have to learn 
how to, how to start casting all your care upon him. Now, I hope we've established, at least in part for your soul this morning, that he cares for you. And that's what Peter said, Cast all, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. All right, so, so we've established, I hope, for you this morning that Jesus cares for you. You can't deny this truth. Jesus Christ cares for you. I, I, I thought and I had, had marked in my note that I would mention the, the cross and, and the blood that was shed and the stripes and the crown of thorns. You know all that. He did all that because he cares for you. All right, so that's, that's not in question. The question is not whether he cares for you. The question is, will you cast all your care upon him? Now, Peter was writing to a, a suffering church. He was writing to a church foreign that, that endured persecutions and, and a concept that's foreign to, to us today. He was writing to people who every day put their lives on the line when they declared the name of Jesus Christ. He was writing to a church that, that Nero at the time was, was, was tying them to poles, impaling them alive, and the ones he didn't, he'd, he'd coat them with tar and light them on fire and let that light the way. That's the, that's the people he was writing to. And he said, he cares for you. What? You know the very next verse, verse number 8, 1 Peter 5 and 8. said, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And right in the middle of all that mess, Doc, he said, he loves you. Listen, if there's anybody in the world, I'll just, we ought to just be shouting all the time. We ain't got no persecution here. Not yet. We may before it's over, but it ain't, it ain't here yet. Ain't, no, ain't nobody put your life at risk because you, you made it to the house of God today. No, you just rolled in of your own free accord, happy as you could be. But how many of us, if we knew, Henry, that when we left the house, it could be the last day because we were going to stand for Christ. How many of us would say, boy, he cares for us. See, to our minds, it's a bit of an oxymoron. It's a, it's a challenge for us to grasp this truth. But you have got to get to the place that you understand that he loves you. That is unwavering. It cannot change. He loves you. Does he care for you? Mark chapter 4, the Bible said Jesus and them got in a boat and they was going to the other side and here comes the storm. Don't you remember that? Jesus so tired, he, he got up in the front of the boat, laid down up in there. The Bible said on a pillar, went to sleep. And boy, that storm was hitting them so bad that the water was coming over the sides and according to Mark, it was full. The boat was full. I don't know how Jesus wasn't getting wet, but the boat was full. And you know what? They came and asked him. They just like you and me. They just like us, Bernice. He was right there. He was right there. He was right there. And they still couldn't grasp. He cared. They woke him up. They said, Master, do you not care that we perish? Jesus looked at him and he said, oh, you little faith. You know what that meant, Tish? You, you just don't understand yet and can't believe that I care for you. He said, do you not care that we perish? The Bible said Jesus stepped out onto the bow of it and he said, peace, be still. And them old waves went down. That wind quit blowing. Somehow in my, in, in my feeble little mind, I, I'm thinking he is bilging water out somehow. I don't know how he did it. But everything got calm. You know why? 
Because he has always been able to calm my storms. There has never been a grief that struck my soul that he wasn't able to prove that he cared for me. There was not a day in my disobedience that he ever one time stopped loving my soul. <laughs> now, come get a song if you would. The declaration of Peter to the church was, is, listen, you're going to have to start learning how to cast your care on him. He cares for you. That, that's not the question. The question is, is when are we going to get to the place, Henry, that we just go to him and say, Lord, I can't do this. Lord, I can't handle this. Lord, I don't know what to do with this. Peter said, just humble yourself before him and then cast it on him. I read in Matthew 6, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now what he was talking about was, was food and raiment and shelter. And he told him, look at the birds, look at the flowers of the field. And, and you know, all of that fascinating. And he said, how much more important to me are you than a bird? We'd say, well, if you just think about it, we're probably a lot more important to God than a bird is. And he said, yet every day, he feeds them. They don't have no barns. They don't have no seed that they're out there sowing and planting and hoeing and watering. And then, uh, you know, every day, Alfred, they get up <laughs> dependent. on one that I doubt their feeble brain comprehends. And yet he said, I feed every one of them every day. He said, how much more important are you than a bird? And I just love how he summed it up. He said, so here's what, here's what I'm going to tell you. He said, you just worry about seeking First, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So, preacher, what's wrong with my life? Well, let's, let's get to that part. Are you seeking God first? Are you putting God before everything else in your life, or is there something more important to you than He is? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And Jesus made this promise. He said, and all these other things will be added unto you. You ain't got to worry about that. He said, for your father knows what you're in need of. And he'll provide all of those things for you. How come, preacher? Because he cares for me. I feel like today, I felt like it for the last couple of days, I felt like all of us just need to Take some things to him. Say, Lord, I can't, I don't want to carry this no more. I've messed it up. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what you're trying to do. I just need to cast this on you right now. I just need to give it to you. Listen, you're worried about stuff. You're fretting over things. You think that your faith is in jeopardy? You feel like some of you feel like you just ain't going to make it. It's about time we just laid that on him, ain't it? Listen, he cares for you. He's proved that. He's proved that. If you've lived for God any amount of time, you've tried him and found that he's good. 
you know he don't fail. Let's not be stubborn today. Let's just be honest for a minute and say, you know what, I got some things I've been trying to haul around that I ain't built to carry. And I, I'm going to give them to you today, Lord. I'm just going to cast it on you. As we stand and sing. Mm-hmm.